Okay, hey everyone, uh, welcome back to the Bay of Blood podcast, we're up to episode 5 today. Um, this is uh, BDG Reviews, and of course... This uh, is garbage, motherfucking, toxic, motherfucking, 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 you know who it is. <laughs> yep. So yeah, we're going to cover uh, some uh, Christmas horror today. Uh Essentially, essential, uh, essential yeah. viewing. Yeah, I mean, because there's a lot of crap out there. Um, unfortunately, some that I've had the unpleasant uh, job of seeing recently. <laughs> so we'll get to that, no doubt. But yeah, we got to just kind of just let people know, you know, at least in our opinion, what we think, you know top five like essentials for this time of year but uh first you know should we start with some news or what oh absolutely let's get right into it yeah for sure so let's see what we got come on open up news we got the um it's not horror horror news or anything but apparently there's an all-female fight club coming in 2020. So, so what? It's going to be two hours just of, like, like women slapping each other? Uh, you know what? Never mind. Let's move on. <laughs> oh, dude. I, I, I have to rant a bit about this. Um, the new Carrie remake. Have you heard about this? Uh, it's it's a series, right? It's it's, it's a, it's a remake, it's so, apparently uh, gonna be a mini series. Yeah, mini series. Yeah. But apparently they said um, what, what they who they want to star in the main role is either someone black or a transgender actor. Mm, that makes sense. I mean, uh, from the get go, dude. First time I saw Carrie, I was probably eight or nine, yeah. and I. Like from the get go, dude, I know, mm-hmm. I knew right away, dude, that that kind of shit was was really lacking in in that film, dude. I, I was oh, just yeah. waiting. <laughs> Man. I'm, glad, I'm glad they're finally doing it, dude. <laughs> Man, I I I I don't get it. I don't know what's with this whole, you know, like. The, I, I don't even know what you call it. The, like, watering down of cinema and everything. Here's the thing. A black girl playing Carrie? I got no problem with that. It can work. But uh, a transgender person? You're pushing it now. Not because they can't do it. But because... Here's the thing. Carrie is a girl... It's a big part of the story that she's a girl. She's not a man in a dress. Maybe it's gonna be a man raining in all her periods on an, on someone. I mean, there you go. <laughs> like ra- raining, raining down his blood on someone. I mean, yeah, that could work. I could see that. <laughs> I'm I'm completely against this. Well, you know what? Here, here's the thing. I'm completely against taking an existing story with an existing character and, you know, we've talked about it before, shoving your, like, uh, your political message into it. Yeah, like, Black Christmas did so mm-hmm. well. Oh, yes. <laughs> here's what uh, this person says. What's your rating it. for uh, Black Christmas? Uh, yeah. Minus 476. <laughs> Out of 10, right? Yeah. It's complete yeah, trash. <laughs> complete trash. It's a dumpster fire without the like the dumpster. The dumpster would like class it up a bit. No, it's just... It's horrible. You know... Y- y- you know what? Fucking... You're just... You're just being that white, motherfucking privileged man again. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Fuck it. I don't care if I am. Um, trash is trash. Oh, yeah, dude. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
I, I mean, we, we might as well talk about it right now because it, it's sort of connected. Black Christmas remake. I mean, you... yeah, yeah, dude. I'm gonna let you flow, flow all you want because your review was so fucking damn good. I'm gonna let you flow. Yeah. Go ahead. Man. I'm gonna have a blast, dude. Go ahead. Yeah. I have seen trash. I I've seen trash and enjoyed it. I've seen trash and thought it was trash, but I have never been pissed off by a movie before. And the Black Christmas remake pissed me off. Like I said, I didn't even. Yeah, that's all, uh, Go sorry. On. One. Yeah. So, Go on. are you saying that the last Jedi didn't piss you off? You know what? I would watch the Last Jedi time and time again before watching Black Christmas. Oh, sorry, folks. That's the scrapped episode right away. <laughs> we'll get back to you. Yeah. No, man, it's like, you know, I don't mind if you have, like, a political agenda in your movie. If that's what, you know, if it services the story. The problem with the Black Christmas remake is it's a movie to service a political statement. You know, before it's a movie, it's like, you know, oh, you know, men are bad, blah, blah, blah. You know, women, good. Uh, you know how they, they always talk about, like, toxic masculinity? What you got with Black Christmas Remake is toxic femininity. You have this one girl in it, and I don't know, like, she's trying to get, like, a, a college professor fired just because, you know, I guess she doesn't like him. It's stupid. Every, everything about it is stupid. The kills are uninspired. Their only scare is stolen from The Exorcist 3. Um, it's trash. It's, it's not even fit to... Uh, you know... I, I would say it's a waste of film, but I don't think it was even filmed on film. I think it was filmed digitally, so I'm saying it's a waste of... Uh, you know memory yeah pretty sure it was it was all digital dude yeah and i mean i i kid you not like i i didn't pay to see this movie i got a tour into this i'm saying it right now um no one should pay to see this trash if i had paid like 14 bucks or whatever to have saw this in the theater and uh yeah I, it would have kind of ruined my uh christmas <laughs> Because I would have been so pissed off. You know, it's just... Ugh. I'm disgusted by it. And I mean... I said in my review, I'll say it here. It makes the 2006 remake look like a Criterion-level classic. You know? That's, that, that's just... Yeah. It's, I mean, like don't get me wrong, dude. Two ta- like like we we talked before, dude. I enjoy yeah, two thousand six for what it was, dude. And I, I think yeah. like, dude, I was born in ninety six, so like I saw it in theaters, and that's that's a horror film I had the chance to see in theaters like early. Yeah. So, dude, maybe it holds like a, maybe I hold it like. Again, maybe it's a soft spot, but it's not a great film. It's not amazing. It's nowhere. But it's entertaining. Uh, as in, as good as the as the original. But it, yeah, it's entertaining for what it is. Yeah. It's like beside the acting. I hate the acting. That dude, I can't stand <laughs> that. Dude. But and the, that trailer was shitty too. Dude. But like, yeah, I can still enjoy it for what it is but i remember one thing i enjoyed the shit i I enjoyed the shit out of out of the soundtrack dude the soundtrack dude i remember i had that shit on cd oh yeah and i enjoyed the fuck out of it dude yeah i mean 
that's there another was thing with something the, to it at least. Yeah, that's another thing with the new remake. The soundtrack's completely uninspired. A- everything feels phoned in. I think the actors knew. I think they were they they read the script or whatever, and they're like, Ugh, "Well, it's a paycheck." Because if if they didn't, and they actually thought this was like a good movie they were going to be in, um, they should be ashamed of themselves. Honestly, every, everyone involved with this movie just buy the tra- should be ashamed buy of themselves. The, yeah, and by the trailer alone, dude. dude yeah. Like, I know, I know a lot of people, like, uh, like, on the Horophilia, like, channel, if you want, on the Horophilia, yeah. like, Banner, don't watch trailer. I do. Yeah. But does anyone actually enjoyed that trailer like i mean someone that watched trailer did anyone like thought that looked interesting no because i don't think so because it looked so generic boring so yeah dude, by the trailer itself i dude i i don't even like i ain't even seen it yet but i I feel like I saw the whole thing just by the trailer. You pretty and much that... did. It, it's 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 not good, and like like here's the thing. It's like I said, if you want to do like uh, you know, the SJW type stuff in a movie, that's fine. Come up with your own movie and do it. You know, don't. Don't shove it into an don't, existing. Don't go sauce. Yeah, don't go sauce go sister on it. Yeah, yeah. You know. Um... Oh, you you heard the latest little bit of news about them, right? Mm, they've not been sure. they've been mass banning people on like Twitter and Facebook and everything for mentioning that they were in um, the Lucifer Valentine. Uh, slaughtered vomit dolls or whatever or regurgitated suicide or whatever whatever one they were in uh, regurgitated sacrifice i think they were yeah in. yeah they're uh yeah they're they're kicking people left right and center so that they don't um that so that i guess get people it. people you don't know yeah uh yeah here here's the thing if you don't know the soska sisters were in that you know essentially puke fetish films yeah. so there eat that <laughs> you know yeah, eat that eat that, eat that literally way that's a go. way to say it I mean I just always reckon this you know everything like if you make movies for a living you should be proud of everything you've done even if it's something completely tasteless and like something that's complete crap the fact of the matter is, you're on screen. You know? You made some... something, you know? Be... You know, take ownership of that. You know, don't go pretending like, like oh no, that, that, that never happened. It's like, we know, this is the internet age. We know it happened, we'll find that it happened, and we'll spread it everywhere like the plague. Um, especially if you don't want us to. You yeah. Know, there, there's no better way. They they should just have come out and said like, you know what? Yeah, we we did that. You know, it is what I'm it, still, it yeah, was. What it was. Who still cares? waiting for? That's why I'm still waiting for someone to ask George Clooney or Charlie Sheen about Grizzly too. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> they they should. I mean, tell us about Grizzly too. <laughs> <laughs> like, like you know, George, I got one question to ask you. You know, like, oh, what again? A return of the killer tomatoes? Nah, nah. Grizzly motherfucking two, dude. What? Yeah. Had- <laughs> See, the funny thing is, I bet you he, I bet you he'd love to talk about that because it'd be something new. No, no one talks about it. 
Yeah, I guess so. You know, it'd be like, what, you're going to talk about, like, uh, you know, the same, like, five movies over and over and over again? So, you know, talk about something that, you know, people don't know about. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Like, how many times did he... Did someone, like, when interviewing, like, him, like, must have mentioned, like, Seven or uh, Fight Club or, I mean, dude, like, it mm. must be crazy. I mean, to the yeah. point of an audience, I think. Oh, I'm quite sure it is. I mean, uh, you know, how can it not be if you keep getting asked the same, about the same things over and over and over again? Eventually, you're just going to be like, you know, I've, I've had enough of this, you know. So yeah, throw out something that no one knows about, and it'd be like, yeah. damn, you've you've like you've done your, uh, you, you've done your uh, research here. You know? yeah, yeah, but I, I think little... I think that's about it. Uh, enough for the Black Christmas, you know. Yeah. So fuck PCs. Evil. Yeah. There's no place for you in horror. Nope, and there's no way you can, like, listen to our shit if you're all about that shit. I'm sorry. Yeah. But get um, your shit and go listen to some other shits. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's this sort of thing. Just, you know. Yeah, go somewhere. We're else. sorry. We're insistent. Ins- we're, we're, I mean, we apologize. We really do. But we're insensitive fucks. So. Yeah. I mean, hell. Let's put it this way, you know. Uh, the world is not a nice place. You know, the world doesn't care if something offends you. Yeah. You know? And I don't want to bother, like, when I record a podcast with one... Like when with with someone like with one of my gray homie dude, I don't want to bother about like you know should I say that should I say it like that dude I'm French Canadian like <laughs> from the get go I struggle to say what I have to say so dude I won't give a fucking shit or if like I won't give a fucking second of my time like to just bother to what the audience might think if I say it that way. Yeah, I mean... I can't waste no time, dude. I can't waste no fucking time. I'm a French, je suis un Français, you know? Yeah. (laughs) No time to waste with you, mais as de cul. You know? There you go. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so let's move on to the next bit of news. Um... Doctor Sleep is getting extended three hour cut for the Blu ray yeah. release. Yeah, dude. Can't wait for this. Hell yeah. I mean No four K though. Um no, I think well hold on. No, there's a no 4K the four K is, is just a the theatrical, yeah. yeah. So if you're after the four K, you know you may it may pay you to, you know, grab a grab one from another country. Yeah, because you know uh, they they've been doing that recently. You know, like directors' cuts and whatever have been appearing on like the foreign releases, but you know, over here aren't getting it. I don't know why. But hell yeah, Doctor Sleep, it was awesome. Yeah, bro, you you, you told me about it. I watched yeah. it this week, and I was like. Damn, that's pretty fucking good. Like, from the get-go, like... Yeah. And, and I mean... we I've, I've said before, you know, and, and, you know, you've mentioned it before, I'm not a big fan of The Shining. Yeah, oh, yeah. But... I, this... That, that, that's... Should I... Should I quit? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a sort of thing. What I found was th- there was a lot of stuff in Doctor Sleep that made me look at The Shining differently. Like shit, like the hotel is all 
Hungary and shit like or you know yes yeah, st- stuff like you know they made it 100% obvious in Doctor Sleep there is a supernatural element you know i always thought there was in um in the original but it could have been argued that everything was happening in people's heads you know, i know that was stanley kubrick's big thing you know he he liked the idea that it could all be in someone's head or whatever. Um, I like, I like the fact that, you know, it's yes, hundred percent. It's, you know, there's supernatural stuff going on. I like the fact that, you know, when you hear Danny talking about like how his father was like at like AA meetings and everything, it's, yeah. you know, that there was more to the Jack Torrance character than we got in the original movie. And yeah, I like but, but do I mean? Did you need that to, like, let's say, um, so f- f- from what I get, like, you get a better time watching The Shining now than you did then, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, it, when I, when I used to watch it before, I always, I, my, my, one of my problems with The Shining was there was I never found there to be a, like a character arc. Like it yeah, was never. Yeah, yeah, there you know, is though. It's more than one. It's a family. Dude. I know. It's just it's like, it's like I always said. I could I could, right from the beginning, I was like, okay, yeah, like. You know, there there was no suspense in it for me. You know, I was always like, yeah, okay, he's already crazy. At the beginning of the movie, you know, he's already crazy. But even and if I he, mean, even I, if he was, yeah, there's a, it's 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 evolving. It's um, it's getting more and more and more crazier. Yeah, it's just I would have preferred. You know, like him to have had his shit together at the beginning and see like a a gradual decline as opposed to like just, you know, a crazy guy who's crazy from the beginning. I I don't know. That's just me. I mean, I know I'm in the minority. uh, Yeah, but dude, we don't. <laughs> I don't know how you see the shining as like the, the first like the first time you see Jack dude he, he's like yeah like um how can I like how can I put it like he like <laughs> um, it's weird to say but like maybe his face doesn't help it but like mm. from beginning, like it's all alcohol. Like it's all because yeah. of the alcohol. Like Yeah. And I mean some people can get fucking crazy, dude, with alcohol, dude. And that's true. That's true. I mean, you know, it like I said, it's just my opinion. I just and I found I, I The Shining was is always difficult because as a movie fan I can appreciate it for, you know, the cinematography is beautiful. The music is beautiful. You know, the acting is good. Every every part of it is good. But there's just something that, you know, I, I don't get the, the hype. You know? I, I don't know. Like I said, it's probably just me, you know. But I, I've always kind of. I, I felt think it is. is yeah, dude, I mean, really. I, I I just I just dude I just don't like I I'm not a fan of Phantasm though because you can't rip on me for that. But like yeah. Shining, dude, it's just so like I don't get what you what, what's not to enjoy about it, dude. I know it's, it's simple. It's a, it's yet effective, and it's it leaves you like. 
like for me, like the first time I saw The Shining, and even now, like it, it, it leaves me like in complete awe, dude. Like, damn, that was yeah. like a ride. See, like I said, I can watch it and appreciate it for the filmmaking and everything, but you know, I've never it, that character study as its finest, like low key. St- character study with Jack yeah. Torrance and shit, dude, that's at its finest, I think. Low-key character study, dude, they nailed it. Like, don't you know. don't know much about it, but you, you see it evolve with like, what you know Yeah. Like, with what you know he he went through or how, how he was before it, but at the same time you don't know shit. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really well done, I think. All I can think, maybe also, maybe it's a fact, maybe it's not long enough. Sounds weird, but I mean, maybe if you add like maybe an extra 20 minutes or so of uh, like exposition, it might, at least for me, you know, it might make a difference. You know, more of like seeing them before they go into the hotel and everything goes crazy. Maybe that's it. I would have liked to Not have long seen enough, them. dude. The Shining is at it, it, least two hours and 15 minutes at least. It is, but maybe, like I said, maybe uh, maybe I'm feeling like... It's two uh, hours and 26 minutes. I just yeah. looked it up on... You know what? Maybe it should have been three hours. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time Cooper could have done something like that. You know... I don't, I don't I don't know, like I said, uh, but we're, we're we've kind of gone off topic. We were on about Doctor Sleep, but yeah, yeah. I, I yeah, but I'm thinking back on it. I think that might be one of my things with The Shining. You know, you see everything you see is them in the hotel. You know, you get like a little bit outside of it, but that's it maybe a bit more outside of the hotel, like seeing them like, like be somewhat normal, you know, without, uh, without the craziness might've helped. It might've, uh, just made it a bit more, I don't know, to my liking. I don't know. It's one of those things. I just, uh, yeah. Yeah, dude, but like I said, like, when you're a fag, you're a fag. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, it's, it's the sort of thing. I Like I said, I know I'm in the minority there, but, you know, I always hear people going on like, oh, like, it's such a scary movie and everything. And I'm just kind of like, no. It's not scary, dude. It's just no. it's so well made. I don't know what's not to love about it. That's, that's, oh, yeah. that's bugged me Tech- out. Technically, it's a it's a great movie, you know. But I don't know. It's just like if someone said to me, you know, like okay, you know, uh, like hey, we're gonna watch a movie. Do you want to watch like Hellraiser or do you want to watch The Shining? I'd be like Hellraiser. But you know what? Mm-hmm. You kind of enjoy like the Nightmare on Elm Street remake, so that yeah. makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know. It's it's the sort of thing. I mean, I'm I'm probably get. I watch The Shining pretty much every year, you know. And every year I try. Hey, yeah, to you just... say you don't love it. Exactly, that's the but thing. Why do you watch it every year if you don't love it? Because I appreciate it as a film, and I like seeing, you know, I like seeing the cinematography. I like seeing, hearing the music and everything. But it's just, I don't know. There's just something about it that just, I don't know, just rubs me the wrong way. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Bro, dude, I, 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 I'm pretty sure I will never understand your... I know, it's, I can't, I can't really put it into words. I wish I could put it into words what it is that, you know, I, I don't want to say that I don't like, but that is just, how can, I, I, I don't know. I, like, I just... I don't have you to like tell me that you don't really enjoy it like you you enjoy it for, like like um 
for his like uh, technical aspects and shit. Yeah. Like, I get it, dude. But I enjoy some films for their technical aspects, dude, like Avatar. And I enjoy yeah. Avatar for his technical aspects. But, that, dude, I hate that fucking film for for everything else dude i i can't i can't watch that shit like every year so i i don't yeah. know what you you're you're doing like with the shining dude but i i can't i can't see I it keep, <laughs> i keep trying to find out i i keep watching it and i'm like now what is it that makes everyone so like over the moon about this movie you know and i and it's i, I I damn good film, and that's it, dude. That's just yeah. a good damn film. Ah, uh, yeah. Like I said, I know I'm in the minority, but you know, <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm sure I, there's some people out there that I like agree with me. You know, I I just find it, bro. I'd sell my soul to understand what the fuck you mean. I know. I I hate not being able to. To put it into words. Are you bored with it? Are you are you like I I find a lot of it boring, yeah. I find uh a lot of the pacing really slow. But that's crib rick though. I mean two thousand and one is one of the slowest fucking film I've ever seen, but it's one of my all time favorite films too. <laughs> maybe that's just it. Maybe I just I'm just not a Kubrick fan. I mean uh, I he love Full Metal him. Jacket, and I I love uh, Clockwork Orange, but you know I don't like 2001. I don't like you know I, The Shining is decent, but not you know it's not like a as awesome as you know everyone would say at least in my opinion. Um, never even seen Eyes Wide Shut. You know a, a lot of his stuff I just haven't watched. I don't know. Yeah, maybe, maybe I'm just maybe I just don't dig Kubrick. But again, how can can you don't dig Kubrick? Anyway, <laughs> that's another <laughs> topic. But dude, you you're driving me insane with that, the Shining, dude. I, I will yeah. never get it. Probably, ne- I don't get it, and I probably never will. Yeah. You know what? Maybe like I need to see it in the theater, like with a crowd. Every time I watch The Shining, I'm always on my own. Maybe I should see it like with people, and and see what what it is like, where people react to things and everything. Yeah, or just go to some random ass like strip club and grab a hooker and like let's watch The Shining. There and, we go. Like, get yourself a blowjob while you watch it maybe <laughs> it'll work yep it might <laughs> but yeah so three hour cut of Dr. Sleep I'm yeah. damn well looking yeah. forward to it yeah sorry about that whole rant but uh, <laughs> it's fine man I mean I, I get it you know uh, what else I we got news wise I don't I don't, I don't <laughs> but... yeah next bit of news we got um gonna be doing a adaptation of uh jerusalem's lot yeah dude that i'm hyped for hell yeah i mean it's like it's the prequel story to salem's lot in case anyone (laughs) doesn't know you know but like salem's lot i love the original salem's lot the miniseries i mean hell you know what i even like the remake you'll probably notice a bit of a jump cut in the audio here but well, is what it is, right? Even Skype don't want shit to do with you. <laughs> yeah, Skype is a, a member of the cult of Kubrick. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. Skype's all about that shining shit, dude. Yep. So, yeah, we are talking about uh, the Jerusalem's lot. Uh, I'm, I'm down for it. I loved uh, the original Salem's Lot miniseries. I love it. I mean, let's put it this way. I have the VHS question is, question. of the miniseries. Go on. Question yeah. is, who doesn't? I'm sure there's some people. Probably just like with, with me and The Shining, I'm sure there's some people that don't like Salem's Lot. You know? Uh, but let's put it this way. I have the VHS of the miniseries 
Well, yeah, let, me, let, me, let me put it that way, too. Yeah. If some listener don't, and like, are, like hate or don't enjoy, like, um, Salem's Lot. Yeah. Like, you can fuck off. I don't want that kind of audience. Like, <laughs> I mean, you know, you know what? Like, if, if you got a reason, let us know. <laughs> yeah. You know. But, uh, we won't read it. <laughs> we won't care about it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I was saying, though, like, I got the VHS of the miniseries. I got the VHS of the movie version. I got the Blu-ray of the miniseries. You know, I've, I have the DVD of the of the miniseries version. I love Salem's Lot. It's awesome. I even like the the remake that they did to a lesser extent. Uh, never seen the remake though. It had um, who was it? Was it Rutger Hauer? Might have been Rutger Hauer. It had some, It was an interesting choice because they went like with like a. Uh, a vampire that was very normal, you know, just looked like, like anyone else didn't have the cool, uh, you know, look of the one from the mini series. That uh, was, that, that was a bit of a misstep on there. Yeah. Um, yeah. But apparently, oh, yeah, 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 dude, uh, um, with, uh, Robert Pattinson. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I like you know that Twilight shit. <laughs> yeah, but apparently this is gonna play uh, star um, Adrian Brody. Mm, that's cool, dude. Yeah, Adrian so uh, Brody, dude, that that dude didn't do shit for so long, right? Yeah, and I mean, hell, he's an Oscar winner. Well, yeah, you know, but it's been I mean, a while since we saw it in anything. Yeah, um, I can't even remember the last thing I saw him in. Uh, me neither. It's been a while, for real. It's been a while, dude. Yeah. It's, like, he yeah. kind of been ghost for... Yeah, I at mean... At least for a year or so, because I don't remember anything, like, Brody-related, no. like, lately, so... No, but apparently it's going to be a 10-episode series... Um, you know, so, um, let's see here. Uh, just trying to see if there's any more information about it. That is he confirmed, like, or? Yeah, uh, fall 2020. Yeah, but is Brody, like, confirmed to star in it? Yeah, apparently. Mm, that's interesting. Yeah, I I'm, I'm down for sure, because, I mean, uh. Honestly, the more Stephen King stuff out there, the better. Yeah. Lawnmower Man. Yeah. <laughs> the Lawnmower Man. That that was so weird. Good. <laughs> I, I, I don't even know if I if I if I would consider it good or bad. It's just it's so weird. Cause it has nothing to do with the, the source material. To begin with, is there a plot to that film? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. Or if yeah. there is, I don't know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, it's, it's interesting, you know, it'll be, it'll be cool to see, uh, um, this mini series and everything. Uh, I think it'll be cool. So, yeah, yeah, dude. I'll be checking it out. Um, I'm going to bring some um, collectible news to the table. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, the NECA Ultimate uh, Trick or Treat figure is out now. If you want to order it, like, on BigBadToyStore.com or, like, it's probably coming or already in your local comic shop. So if you want to grab it, it's, like, like at least in Canada, it's, like, thirty five ninety nine. so... That's not but bad. From what I heard, they are going out pretty fast. So, like, hurry up if you want to grab it. Well, that's uh, cool. And uh, They Live, a uh, two-pack figure by Nika 2, is coming out. So, like, in <laughs> Canada, we don't have him now, but it's coming out 
pretty soon. It's from what I read online, it's like it was supposed to be like just of the regular line, but there weren't um, enough like pre-order um, for it, and they were like like we'll just do a run of what we planned and there won't be like any uh, reissues of them. So mm. if you see them, grab them. If you want them, that's like, if you see them, like don't take chance, like grab them right away. That's cool. Oh yeah, dude. Like, yeah. Like if you want like with Nick, like you never know, dude. If a, if a figure like, how can I put it? Like Nika are so fucking weird. If a nigga like Nika figure like sells so well, they will put out like limited amounts of of it like throughout the years, like later after the the first initial release. Yeah. But not enough again for people who want to buy it, so with Nika, dude, I don't take chance. I go right away, I buy it. I just yeah. buy it right away when it comes up. Well, yeah. I think the thing is, NECA, you know, they really cater for collectors more so than, like, mass sales. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, you yeah, know? dude. I mean, I, I, you're, you're never going to see, like, you know, like a seven ninety nine NECA figure, like, out, you know, for, like, mass market consumption. Yeah, but you know what, dude? Like, not here, like, not in Canada, but, dude, in the yeah. U.S., uh, Nick are actually, like, on the Walmart shelves, like, next to some Star Wars figures and shit. Well, that's pretty cool. I mean... That's cool, but that's kind of weird, too, because, like, n everyone can buy it, so, oh, we... Like, you know, like... Uh, like, dude, I don't know, like, it, anyone can buy it, like, I, I don't have anything with anyone against anyone buying figures but like yeah they can buy it and just like oh i have a michael figure and it's like just they are like eating like what's what's left of, of the figure re like figure availability yeah. you know yeah oh so that's that's that, yeah that's kind of but that's a whole other topic. But yeah, if you want to grab them, do it now. <laughs> that's cool. Any other uh, figure-related news or anything? Mm, 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 not really. Except that there's a burning Godzilla figure from uh, Godzilla King of the Monster. Um, that's coming out too. And NECA confirmed that they got the license for um, Godzilla vs. King Kong 2. So. Oh, cool. That's good. I'm looking forward to that. That'll be cool. We got a bit of comic book news. Apparently, they're uh, doing a four-issue comic series of Transformers versus the Terminator. Yeah, yes. I've it's coming it. next year. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know what to think. Uh, me neither. We'll have to wait and see. I think. Because uh, I mean, let's be a hundred. Let's be a hundred percent honest. There'd be no way that Skynet could win against, you know, Transformers. No, I don't think so, too. No, you know, I mean, I mean, it from what it looks like, looking at the cover art and everything, it looks like, you know, the Decepticons are kind of like in control of Skynet or something. Which that that's an interesting little plot line there, you know, but, um, I don't know. Mm, yeah. It's just, yeah, it doesn't seem, uh, I don't know. It doesn't seem like it's going to be a really great thing. <laughs> yeah, and that teaser cover was trash to do from what I saw. Yeah. So next bit of news we got, uh, oh, Capcom of, uh, registered some trademarks uh they've they've re uh registered dino crisis and dark stalkers so it looks like uh maybe we'll be getting some new dino crisis and dark stalkers games damn that's that's good dude yeah i mean i loved the first 
uh, Dino Crisis. I played it once at my friend's place, dude. Yeah, I had a blast. Yeah, it was a it was a great game. It really was. And I mean, even part two was decent. I'll I'll say that part two was decent, not great, but decent. And Darkstalkers was always a fun, you know, uh, fun fighting game series. Yeah. I mean, hell, you know, how can you go wrong? Essentially, the Street Fighter engine with, uh, you know, monsters. <laughs> so there's that. And last bit of news I got is uh, apparently um, uh, Keith Thomas is directing a new adaptation of Firestarter for uh, Blumhouse. I don't know. Keith Thomas oh, yeah. did, did the vigil. I did. I haven't seen the vigil. I don't. I don't know if that was any good. I don't this, know. Like, why do they like remake reboot? Re dude, ugh, dude, I'm getting tired of that too, dude. Like every like. Yeah, I mean the fact of the matter is this: like, look, look, look at Stephen King alone. He has so many stories. Adapt something else. You know, don't don't remake stuff if you don't have to. Ah, uh, dude. Ah, uh, yeah, I know, I know. It's ah. Uh... <sighs> I I just. Now, I mean, I just don't care for real. I just don't. I mean, don't get me wrong. Of all the Stephen King movies that exist, Firestarter could do with a remake. You know, it it wasn't the strongest one. It's it's an example of one that maybe you should remake. But um, I don't know. Like I said, there's there's more stories out there. Yeah. That could do with you know, maybe getting a bit more love, you know? I mean, yeah. how many times can you see, uh, how many times can you see the same story? And uh, last bit of news, um, on February 25th, uh, Color Out of Space is coming out with Nicolas Cage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm kind of hyped about that, actually. I mean, think of it. Nicolas Cage, directed directed by Richard Stanley. And it's a Lovecraft story. So. Yeah. And I mean, now, I mean, don't don't get me wrong. It, it's, a, it's a Lovecraft story that's been told many, many times. It's one of the most commonly, you know, told Lovecraft stories in movie form. Um, but... I could see Nicolas Cage doing it. I could see him doing it really well. He's got yeah, that bro. Right, he's got that right level of crazy. Yeah, I uh, yeah, dude. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd be down for it, dude, for sure, dude. I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it's the sort of thing. Uh, it's a it's a crazy enough role that he can really go all out. You know, and it'll uh it's always good to get more Lovecraft out there. Yeah, but I don't want cheap Lovecraft. That's Oh yeah, we need like some what we need really. We need um Del Toro's at the mountain mountains of madness. That yeah. needs to happen. I mean, it should have happened by now. It would, you know, who else could do that story better than Del Toro? I can't think of anyone. Hmm. I mean, a lot of people could do it, but... But do it justice? Without dumbing it down or anything? Because, I mean, you know, Lovecraft has, like... You know, Del Toro has, like, a genuine, like, love of Lovecraft. 
I mean, he's even got like a a life size like mannequin of him. Maybe a uh, Riester. Ooh, yeah, I could see that. I could see, I could see that. Uh, maybe, maybe though, for more like one of the more subdued stories, though. Mountains of Madness, you know, is a bit more fantastical, if you will. Yeah. You know, but yeah, Ari Aster, I could see doing something like you know, uh, like Shadow of Rinsmith or something, maybe, or Hell Doom that's came to Sarnoff. That would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, more Lovecraft. Give us more Lovecraft, damn it. We need it. Absolutely. Yeah. So we'll we'll move right in into that motherfucking main segment. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, our top five essential Christmas horror movies. I'm I'm sure we're gonna have some overlap in these. Um, uh, probably. Yeah, because well, I mean, probably. let's let's be honest. I mean, there there's a decent amount. From what I know, there's 120 Christmas-based horror movies. But of those, really, I mean, I've been doing like a a, a countdown, you know, 12 days of Black Christmas, and it's kind of difficult to find ones that are really good. Uh, good, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoyable, it's easy, though. That's true, that's true. So, uh, want to go first? What's your number five? Uh, my number five is gonna be, um, Silent Night, Deadly Night 5, The Toy Maker. Ah, Yes. I actually wanted to watch that the other night, but up here in Canada, we don't get Voodoo, that streaming station. That's the only thing it's on. Um, the Toy Maker, dude, it's a straight to video release, but it's yeah. so it's so weird, but it's it's so enjoyable. It's it's like everything you expect. But at the same time, it's everything you don't expect from that kind of film, and that's yeah. what I love about it. Does like, the does the name kind of let it down though? Putting you know Silent Night Deadly Night there does that do it a disservice? Well, if you had, like if you if for like if Silent Night Deadly Night for you is all about like the you know, Billy family and shit, like, yeah. But if you see, like, I see, I tend to see, like, Silent Night, Deadly Night as a big-ass anthology, you know? Like, I, I don't, I don't really care about the, like, the, you know, the, the nods to the previous one or the links that yeah. were trying to be established, you know? Yeah. I just see them as what they are. They are enjoyable or they are not. Three is not. Four <laughs> is not. And five is. So I like I, three. I just he has really, like a calendar on his head. I can't, I can't really spoil it because, I mean, if I'm, like, leave it this way. It, it's enjoyable for what it is. Don't expect something in the line of one and two. Like, just take, like, like you, like you said, you were kind of right. Like, just erase, like, silent, like see it as that toy maker. Yeah. Just watch it for what it is. And I can't, like, go into detail without, without spoiling it. So it's kind of touchy because the twist is really the film. But, yeah. like, for me, I didn't see it coming. Like, mm -hmm. I couldn't even see it coming dude I, I i i saw absolutely nothing i never saw it coming um 
I think it's for the the most of it's it's, it's kind of well acted too, and it's mm. it's just something you can enjoy. I, I see it as a film that I could have enjoyed like watching on TV. That's what it was. So yeah, I mean I've I've noticed a lot recently. You know, when you look back at movies, you know that are sort of like considered almost like uh like the the redheaded stepchild of a series you know the 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 outcasts of the series if you will usually they're pretty good movies but it's just they're they're given that title and when you give that title certain expectations are made you know yeah and if you don't if you either don't live up to those expectations or if you if you change it you know people don't like it know what i mean yeah yeah so but that's like that's I, one i definitely want to give another give another shot to cuz you know it's been years since i've seen that yeah bro it's it, it is it's just it is what it is dude it's enjoyable for what it is don't yeah. like anything from it like and just enjoy the ride for what it is yeah it can be cheesy like it like it can be cheesy by times and like but it it's all part of the charm i think at least for me dude i enjoy everything about it the cheese of it i enjoy the cheese of it so yeah, yeah that was that was my number five yeah i'll give that a shot definitely for number five i'm going with cannibal claws i love cannibal claws <laughs> why the why why <laughs> It's it, hell. It's it's got what's his name in it? Uh, Bob Glazer. That's reason enough. And I mean, how how awesome! Like a mall Santa that you know eats people at Christmas. How can you go wrong with that? It's so you know sleazy and grimy and just like seems so wrong. That I just love it. <laughs> go ahead, dude. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know what else to say. You know, you hear the name alone, Cannibal Claws. If if you hear that name and you're interested you know, you'll, you'll know what you're getting yourself into. If you hear that name and you're like, no, Santa Claus isn't a cannibal, then it's not the movie for you. Basic plot-wise. Basic maybe plot, that, that'll, that'll, stick that'll work. Uh, a disgruntled kind of bitter guy um, kills people and eats them at Christmas. That's pretty much it. I, I, you know, you know what? I'm gonna try to find the actual, um, the actual uh, synopsis for it. Yeah, you know, because um, I, I, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to say I don't want to give stuff away, but you know, I don't. <laughs> I wanna. Here we go. Open up. I don't need no stupid Firefox thing. Bob motherfucking Glazer. That guy, seriously, if they don't cast him as like the next like grandfather on uh in like a Texas Chainsaw movie, they're they they're really missing out. Because he's, well, he's who, of, who do you really want? Um, another Texas Chainsaw film? I I don't. 
personally. I, I don't, but it's going to happen. Okay, so here we go. Um, it's Christmas Eve, and Santa is out and about spreading joy with a hatchet and some barbecue. <laughs> spreading Something. joy. Yeah. Cannibal Claus is a modern tale of a mall Santa Claus who is down in his luck at Christmas time. Instead of s- staying in on Christmas Eve, he decides to go out and punish the naughty in this blood-drenched, meat-filled cannibal fest. So you know what? You Basically, you say Christmas evil times a hundred. Yeah. And throw cannibalism into it just for the hell of it. And a lot of gratuitous nudity. And that's what you got. I love it. I, wa- I watch it whenever I get the chance. Because it's awesome. And he's, he just looks so sleazy and grimy and like, you know, this it's like, let's put it this way. This is a mall Santa that would like get a boner while, you know, with kids on his lap. And he'd revel in the fact that he did. Yeah. What, what's wrong about that? Exactly. <laughs> He's, he's really, he's twisted, and it's just awesome. So, for me... Yep. Um, Jack Frost, for sure, dude. Oh, yeah, yeah, Jack Frost definitely falls in there. At least oh, part yeah. one. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, part one, not two, fuck two. There's yeah. no part two. No, There's no such thing as part two. <laughs> yeah, part yeah. one. It's just yeah. like an overall so fucking fun film. It's just enjoyable for what it is. It's it's just dumb fun. That's that's yeah. literally what it is. And yeah, they, like I feel like they knew that it was dumb oh, they, fun. Yeah. Well, I mean, they they knew it's like they. They knew it, but, like, even the fact that they knew it, like, and they, still they did it them. even pretty, I'm pretty sure they, they probably even, like, blown their own expectations away, dude. That film is so fucking fun. Oh, yeah, it is. And let's be honest, you see the cover of that movie, and you know going in, you're not going into like some serious, you know, like horror film or whatever. You know exactly what you're getting into. <clears throat> Killer Mutant Snowman. It's awesome. Oh, dude. And, I and mean, best use of a carrot on screen ever. Oh, yeah, dude. And <laughs> best use of a shower, too. Yep. <laughs> Man, seriously, that. I, I watched that the other night, and I actually watched it. There was a commentary on it from um, Bloodbath and Beyond, the those guys. And um, they were even saying in, in the commentary, like, you look at the cover, you know, and it never happens in the movie. You know? Like, yeah, you get him with, like, some teeth, but you never get him, like, the level that they yeah. had on the cover art or anything. No, no, yeah, yeah, you're right. And I love it. They didn't even try, you know, it was just like, oh, you know, okay. I just love the fact it's just this generic looking, you know, snowman for the most part. And And that's how, how can you not love like the, the jerk kid, you know, getting knocked over and then getting his head cut off by his own sled or whatever. That was awesome. Oh, no, you know what? Yeah. Maybe that snowman was the snowman. Like, maybe Jack Frost was, was the snowman at the end of Ice. Maybe. That would make a lot of sense. Like, <laughs> Jack Frost burst through it. Yeah. Could be. <laughs> yeah. Jack Frost is just fun. It's dumb fun and it's dumb fun done well yeah you know and i like i love the fact it doesn't take itself seriously you know so like 
I know you, you just thinking about it logically, there's no way you can make that serious, but you could, you could do like a scary movie about like a, like a possessed snowman or something, you know, but I love the fact that they just played up the fact, you know, like essentially he, his hands are like, you know, like oven mitts and they look like oven mitts. It's awesome. It's it's just so, and it's interesting too. I mean, like from the get go, it's interesting. Like, yeah. like I mean, I'm gonna go as far as to say that I care about the characters, but oh no, <laughs> but like, it's interesting. Like, you want to know what happens to them, like for what they are. So I just I just want to know how that town functions with a sheriff that's that stupid. <laughs> Uh, I mean, everything he does is so ridiculously dumb. It's like you couldn't get any dumber if you had if you had to wear a helmet. Uh, sorry, you can't get more dumber than that, dude. Like the two officer in the Halloween fire, like what? What? Well, yes. You know, with that soundtrack, that 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 <laughs> shitty ass, like what? What? When yeah. they walk out of the house. Yeah. Yeah. That is true. <laughs> no, but I mean, how did this guy become a uh, sheriff when he's so inept? <sighs> <laughs> then again, that would that would require some logic, and a movie like this doesn't need logic. Yeah, that movie lacks logic and revels I in the fact that, that it way. does. I don't want any logic. I don't want. Yeah. Any fucking logical explanation for it, dude. I just yeah. love the way it's made. I love, I love the way how it plays out. It's just overall funny. It's a good time, dude. It's yeah, it is. And honestly, that's that's all it needs to be. You know, no one. It doesn't need some huge message or anything. Snowman killing people. Fun enough as Playing it is. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so what's yeah. your name? My number four is Silent Night. The soft reboot. Yeah, of Silent Night, Deadly Night. I I love it just because they they did what the best remakes do, and that's they take the the very basic bones of the story and run with it and create something new. So they took you know Killer Santa Claus. And they ran with it. And it worked. And I mean, how badass was it to have a Santa Claus with a flamethrower? Yeah, flamethrower. I mean, that's awesome. And And that mask's pretty cool, too. Oh, yeah. Creepy as hell, really. You know, like with like the like like the black in the eyes and everything. Yeah. Real and like really mean spirited. Like some of the kills are just like. Like the the one of the very first kills, you know, like you find like her hand in a drawer and her like torso on top of the television and like her head in a fridge and it's like, damn, it's like you went kind of overboard with this one. I got one question for you though. Is it yeah. is this was that film straight to DVD? Was it straight to? Yeah, I think it was straight straight to video release. Um. I think it was supposed to have a, a theatrical run, like a bit of one, but I, I think it got like shafted. It got the, I think it got the, you know, the midnight meat train um, thing happened to it where they shoved it in like four theaters for like two days or something. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's a shame because uh, it's one of, it's one of the, the better, like serious Christmas horror movies. You know? Yeah, for, it's it's been a fucking while since I saw it, but isn't like Malcolm McDowell in it too? Yeah, he plays the sheriff. And he Malcolm McDowell plays a douchebag just so well. He plays like a sheriff who's like, you know, so like who thinks he's the the next like MacGyver or something, you know, and he's like He's going to regret coming to my town. And oh my God. 
it's so cheesy and so you know he's so over the top but it works you know and honestly you can put him in anything and he brings the, the movie up bro it's been a while since I saw it but like I yeah. own it dude but that's one film I didn't watch in a year even even when it comes to like the holidays it should, dude, I yeah. always go like yeah. I always pass it dude and I, I don't know why yeah so, I watched it last night and I I had a great time. I loved it. It was awesome. And it was just so cool, you know, like, just how, like I said, how mean-spirited some of the kills are. Like, I mean, dude kills a kid. He, like, it even says it in the movie. You know, like, uh, like what was it? He, uh, he, he poked her like a pig or something, or, or, you know, like, Essentially, he, like, he rammed a spike through her. He was, like, a little, like, ten-year-old annoying brat. And it was kind of awesome. You, you know how it is with me. I, I I appreciate when they kill kids in movies. You know, they shouldn't get a pass just because they're young. <laughs> Yeah, bro, but I can't, dude. I I don't believe that I. I it's been like at least like I. I might be wrong, but I. It's been in my collection for like at least three or four years, dude. And I watched yeah. it once. Yeah, definitely I, watch it again. Yeah. You'll have a blast. You really will. And I'm, I'll am i just say this. There's a scene with a wood chipper. I don't know if you remember it, but it's, it, it's, it's, it's great. I love it. Uh, I don't, I don't remember it. For, to, to be honest, dude, I don't. Yeah. yeah. You, dude, watch it again. Seriously, you'll get to the wood chipper scene. You'll be like, "Oh, damn!" It, it's like let's put let's let's put it this way: of all the ways that some like a, a human body could go into a wood chipper, it has to be the most painful. We'll just say that, bro. So, I got I got a. I own it on DVD. Is there a Blu-ray release? Yeah, yeah. And the Blu-ray looks pretty good, honestly. Also, it's got this really nice, like, cold blue tone to it. So everything feels cold. There's a lot of, like, you know, grays and blues in the color scheme and everything, and it just works. (laughs) So, uh, what's your number three? Uh, my number three is going to be Gremlins. Oh, hell yeah. I love Gremlins. I mean, Gremlins. What? Yeah. What's the same? What more can you say? Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's perfect. It is. And it, it, it got that, it really got that holiday feel to it. It really oh, does. Yeah, definitely. And honestly, let, let's be a hundred percent honest. The the creature designs are perfect. You know, there's they're, they're suitably cute when they're supposed to be, and they're suitably evil looking when they're supposed to be. Yeah, but like, like everyone, like, like I remember, like just 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 for say, like. I was like maybe um, let's say eight or uh, maybe seven or eight when I first saw it. Like I was, I was like, yeah. in, like I was just getting into school and like when Christmas time arrived, I was like, oh, you watch Gremlins and shit. Then some have, have, like most people that have like seen it were like oh yeah, yeah, yeah you know the, the cute little um 
Mogwai and shit. And mm-hmm. but you know what, Gremlins was mm-hmm. never about like the cuteness or the ugliness of the creatures. It was all about that feeling, that that setting, that small ass town yeah. covered in snow during the holidays. That was yeah. what I loved. Oh yeah, well it's one of those things. It feels like Christmas time when you watch it. You know, it feels like that time of year. It doesn't feel like like a set or anything. It doesn't feel fake. I can't watch that film like during the summer. I just can't. I know it just doesn't feel right. I know what you mean. I can watch Halloween like in winter, like no problem. I can watch Halloween like midsummer, no yeah. problem. But Gremlins, uh, you gotta watch just... it in winter. Yeah, dude. Yeah, and I mean, it's it's so um, like to be honest, kind of unique too. I mean, yeah. Like, the fact that you get, like, that cute little fucking fella, but, like, if you don't... Like, like if you don't take, do it exactly right... Yeah, you, know, you can get fucked up or it, like... Yeah. I just love the fact, though, that, you know, once the other, like, mogwais appear, when, after he gets wet, they're, like, just, like, naturally evil. So I wonder whether, like, that species is just naturally evil. And he's, like... Well, if they... they, I think so, because if they, like... Like, if they multiply and, like, reproduce, like, themselves for Mm -hmm. so here, like... I think so, because if, um... Let's put it this way. If... Those are things that comes like from the dawn of times. Like they, they yeah. had to hunt and adapt and shit. So, yeah, maybe. I, mean, I just love the fact, you know, that like, you know, Gizmo's this cute little, you know, happy thing, and all of the other ones are dicks. You know, there's not like a single other one which is kind of nice. Like, no, they, they all know exactly what they want to do. They want to eat after midnight. They want to transform. I love that. I just, I, you know, just the thought that, you know, like, the one that we consider, like, the hero of the story or whatever, it could just be, you know, the, the you know, like, the autistic one that was left out of all the other stuff. Yeah. I mean, it would make a lot of sense. Yeah, but <laughs> it's so um I think maybe it's just random too. I mean like mm. most of them like got that bad like DNA or genes like going for him and yeah. maybe once in a while you got one good one. Yeah. The, the kind of like the genetic defect one. Yeah. I like that, though. You know, and I like that, you know, I like that, you know, he's smart enough to, like, use, like, well, they, they're they're all kind of smart, actually. They can use tools and stuff and everything. Yeah. But, you know, they're apparently smart enough to rewire traffic lights. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> You know, but then at another point, you know, you have them swinging around on power lines, so they they ain't that bright or whatever. Yeah, I mean, you can, <laughs> like, you can fuck up some like uh, old lady share, like. Yeah. Oh, and that that old bitch. I mean, I remember when I was a kid, I was so happy when she got hers. I mean, really. Yeah, you know, it was it it was such good. That's how you know you've created an a good character with good good a good actor doing it when they can make a character genuinely unlikable and you want to see them get theirs. Yeah. You know, like her and like um B- 
Burke and Aliens are perfect, oh, yeah. perfect Mother- examples. Fuck that dude. Yeah. You know, and it's it that's a mark of good acting there when you can make someone when you can hate someone that much, you know? Yeah. Hells yeah. That that was that was that's a great choice, honestly. Gremlins is What's a classic. What's your next motherfucking pick? My next pick is Krampus. Mm. Yeah. From a uh, few years back. Not not one of the many um, other things. I, I, I just... I really dig the idea of, like, an evil version of Santa Claus. You know? I just think that's kind of cool. Like, the, the, the exact opposite of Santa Claus. And it worked. And I, I love the design with, like, you know, the, like, cloven hooves and everything. And I love the fact that you never actually saw what Krampus looked like. By the end, you see it, right? No, he always has on that flesh mask. That, like, the, the Santa Claus, like, mask. You never properly see what's beneath it. And I think that. Like, face in a quick shot. No, no, you never no. see. It's always got that mask on. And again, you know, I love the fact that, you know, they're like taking out kids and everything. And, and I love the ending. What's cool about that ending is, you know, there's l- literally, you know, like three ways to look at that ending. And it re- it really depends on your personality as to how you think that ended. Uh, yeah, like, do you believe or you don't? Yeah, like, did it all, did it all actually happen? You know, and, like, now, if it did, are they all, like, literally, like, stuck in, like, a Groundhog's Day and they keep repeating Christmas Day over and over again? Did that it ha- movie for me, what yeah. made that movie great for me? Yeah, uh, was the scene like uh, you know when they're they are like hiding like underneath a, a car. You oh, know? I love and that. That scene was fucking well made, dude. Oh yeah, definitely. And I mean, it's the fact also, you know, like she's there under the car, and you know, party is like, you know, just don't don't move, you know, you, you, he's gonna get you. And then another party is like, yeah, move. <laughs> Let yeah. him get, yeah. You know, and again, it was one of those things, it's surprisingly mean-spirited. And I love it for that. I don't see it as mean-spirited, though. Dude, he, they, they hook a kid with, like, a giant hook and pull him up a chimney. Oh, yeah, maybe you're right. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I, I, you know, there's no way that kid's alive. <laughs> and I, I love the fact at the end, you know, they like, you know, the kid comes back wanting to like change everything. So essentially he takes them to hell or whatever. One ending, I, I you know. The, the, the one thing that like that was a big turn up for me. That was the ending. Yeah. The ending was too much in your face. Like, everything went good. Like, everything was, like, perfect for me. Basically perfect, dude. Every scene, like, played out so good for me. Mm-hmm. But by the end, I was like, damn. Am I watching, like, Drag Me to Ill or some satire and shit, you know? <laughs> yeah, but then, then you know, you get then you get the thing where, like, he wakes up, right? Yeah, but so, so you're all like, you know, it, did he just dream everything, or did it happen, and now he's been given another chance, or is he just, are they just going to repeat that day again and again and again, or are are they literally stuck in a snow globe? You know. Yeah, but it depend depends on your personality as to what. You know what you feel the ending is. Nah, I, 
honestly, like the ending, like I, I just, I just really don't care for the ending like <laughs> that much. Like yeah. really, like I say, I enjoy like three, the three quarter of the film. Yeah. Yeah, I, I dig it. I, I just, I love the fact that, you know, it was a theatrical Christmas horror movie. Yeah, it was a good damn right, dude. It yeah. was a goddamn good right, dude. I remember seeing it at theater, and I had a blast, but... Yeah. Like, watching it, like, now? Eh, like... <laughs> yeah. I don't think I... Um, I don't think I enjoyed as much as I did back then. Ah. <laughs> Yeah, so, what's your number two? Dead Snow. <laughs> Dead Snow. Dead Snow's fun. Dead Snow's damn fun. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I'm I, we, we mentioned it on that on our overrated one. I, I find it a little bit overrated, but that that's just that's just you know being nitpicky. It it's for what it is, it's damn fun, and I Dude. I love. I love the fact that, you know, like, the fat guy gets the girl. Oh, yeah, absolutely, dude. I and, love that, you know? <laughs> and, like, it's, like, every year, dude, I gotta watch it. When it's, like, like the minute there's fucking snow, and yeah. you know we get it early here in Canada, so. Oh, yeah. Bro, what, do you, I gotta... what, what do you think of part two? Um... I've never seen uh, uh, you know. It's so um it's I've not got the bad. Movie, it's not I've never watched it. It's not bad, dude. It's like um like Zombie Land 2. Uh Zombie Land double tap level of film, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. So essentially just more of the same. Yeah, but like more, um, like the first one was stupid, but like in an um, enjoyable way. But that was just maybe too much, I think. Like, yeah, like yeah. you know when when you know you got something good, but you think it's so good that you can do pretty much anything with it. Yeah, I think that's what happened with uh, Dead Snow too. Ah. Uh. I have to get around to watching it. I have the Blu-ray, but I've never. But don't get me wrong. It. Don't get me wrong. It's not bad. It's enjoyable, dude. Like first time I saw it, I was hella fucking drunk. Like <laughs> hell fucking drunk, dude. I was wasted as fuck. <laughs> and dude, I was laughing and laughing, dude. I like literally like crying, like. <laughs> but. Bro, like I watched it like um, the year after it, like, yeah. and I wasn't as drunk as I was, and yeah. I was like, "Damn, I, <laughs> I look stupid." <laughs> so, so maybe the more beer, the better when it comes to that movie. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, that that uh, Dead Snow though is a good choice. I mean, it's it's damn cool. It is. Yeah. Again, like with, with Jack Frost, it's just a fun movie. Overall fun flick, yeah. Yeah, that's the way to go. Okay, so my number two. I'm trying to think of one because, you know, I don't want to go with uh, one of the same ones. You know what? I'll go with Mrs. Claus. God damn right, dude. That was a really good movie. <clears throat> little 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 slasher, dude. Yeah. And God I mean damn good little slasher. I, I have to say though about it though, you know you have to ignore the cover. I love that cover, though. I, I don't get me wrong. I love the cover too. It looks really cool, but it gives you a wrong impression. 
you see that cover and you get the feeling like okay it's going to be like a like a supernatural type type thing but what you get is you get a really solid little slasher film and it's awesome and it is too except for one girl one girl was pretty fucking annoying <laughs> Did, yeah. I can remember her name, dude, and nor the name of the actress. But if you watch it, like any of the listeners out there, you know who I'm talking about. Like she's so fucking annoying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's a it's a damn some decent fucking kills too. Oh yeah, I mean that's one thing that really surprised me. You know, like how competent the the like the kills are. You know? Yeah. And honestly, I didn't see the end of that coming. I'm, I mean, I saw who the killer was going to be. But the secondary twist, I didn't see coming. Um, I kind of... I've seen it a little coming a little though did you yeah you see you see i didn't i i just i didn't you know the first like i said the first part i but saw it's that good mile twist, away. Though. good twist yeah. i mean i don't think everybody will see it coming but no i guess and i was right so yeah <laughs> Well, you know when you're a clever motherfucker like me? Yep. <laughs> but yeah. no, dude, like, um, no, dude, like, it was so random. I was like, oh, maybe it's that, maybe it's, and I was right, so. Yeah. But I don't think, like, you can see it, like, coming, like, miles away. I no. don't think, yeah. Well, it's like, like I said, I, I didn't see it coming at all. I mean, I, it, it came out of complete left field for me. Now, I mean, maybe if I go back and watch it again, maybe I'll see like some hints beforehand. But uh, from what I could see, there weren't any. You know, everything. Yeah, there are. There are. Some. Are there? Yeah. I'll have to go back and watch that again and look. Yeah, something. I'll. Um, I, like I, I can tell that. Like I can tell you like right away because it's like so spoily but i'll i'll yeah. text them you'll see yeah cool so what's your number one my number one is christmas evil aha good choice good choice christmas evil just take some guy that just take some lonely ass guy that like Christmas got such a special place in his heart. Like, it's such a big deal. Like, yeah. He was literally, like, lay back watching, like, the Christmas um, parade. Do you see parade in English? Uh, parade. Or parade, yeah. yeah. Like, lay back watching the Christmas parade and, and shit. And, like, like, just, like... <laughs> But he's yeah. like just dressing as Santa Claus and just sticking his mustache and ho ho ho. And he's <laughs> watching me like, damn, like that dude. Nah, nah, there's something fucking wrong. Yeah. The thing with, with him, which I find really kind of interesting, is yeah, he's, he, not, he's, he's not that bad. No, he's he's like killing people and everything, but you know. You, you, you kind of like him. Yeah. You know, he seems like, like him. he seems like a nice guy that, you know, has kind of gone off the deep end, but he seems like, you know, like his, his heart's in the right place, but his mind is not, not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, I, you know, when, it, when he's like, uh, like the, um, when he uh, with with his truck, like he's um, like pulling out to the um, the hospital. Yeah, is it the hospital or um, 
where where he's like and he's like uh, I got sons and toys and shit. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah, it was like for for the kids. I think that was a hospital. Yeah. Yeah, and <clears throat> you know, like that's just like you know he's not like. A complete like psychopath, like he's got that Christmas spirit like going yeah. on yeah. still. Yeah, yeah, and you know, and the thing is, like I said, you like him. You know, he's he's a he's like a, he's like a nice guy, other than the fact that he's killing people. Yeah, and what do you, what do you think of the ending? I love the ending, though. I, I love the ending, too. I actually watched uh, the commentary on it. And you hear, you know, like, what they'd originally planned for the ending. I I, I never listened to the commentary, though. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what they said. Uh, here's a slight spoiler warning. We're going to be talking about the ending, so... Yeah, there you go. Essentially, you know how, like... You know, he's going off in his van or whatever, and like yeah. he goes over that like jump type thing and then he like takes off into the sky. Yeah, like a real fucking Santa Claus. Yeah. What what was supposed to happen? The truck was supposed to go over, roll over, explode, and he was supposed to die. But you were supposed to still have that scene. So essentially, you know, as far as he was concerned he's taken off in sky. He's become like the real Santa Claus, but you know, he's actually dead. That was the original plan, but they didn't have the money to shoot it. So they just went with how they did it. Uh, bro. I, I, honestly, dude, I think it would have been a better ending. <laughs> honestly. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's this sort of and thing. And props I mean, to the guy that played that that, that crazy ass motherfucker too, dude. Yeah, yeah. And and hell, we 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 have to talk about the transfer on the yes, Blu-ray. Dude. Honestly, I mean, I'm late to the game with vinegar syndrome. I really am. But they but are that's, that's surprising one, me left, right, like. center. That's when yeah. I go like I bought you, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was like, you gotta see it. You gotta see it. Yeah. Hell, I got it and I purposely saved it for for Christmas so that I could watch it for Christmas. <laughs> and I I love it. It's awesome. It really and, a, is. and a beautiful transfer as well. So like 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 we said, you know, it's vinegar syndrome. Of course, it's going to be a good transfer. <laughs> that kind of goes without saying. Yeah. No brainer. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, my number one. Do, do I even have to say it? It's Black it's Christmas. Nineteen. Hell no. <laughs> Black Christmas seventy four. I love it. I love every yes, part of it. I was expecting like Silent Night, Deadly Night, for real. See, the thing is, I like Silent Night, Deadly Night. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I'll throw that. I could throw that in as like an honorable mention. But I would watch Black Christmas before I'd watch Silent Night, Deadly Night. Because. The, the, Lois the, well, yeah. There's only one thing that bothers me about about Black Christmas, and that is uh, what's your name, uh, Olivia Hussey's voice, and that's it. That's my only complaint for the entire movie. I just find your voice annoying. But it's a damn good film, dude. It's... It is. And I mean, and it and it just reeks of Canada. 
Bro, I gotta ask you though. Uh, yeah. You know there were so many releases of it, like in the past, like three years. Yeah. Like, you got a Scream Factory, and you get another one. Like, is it the not Celebration Edition? The um... oh, the the oh, what was it? Man. Like the red and black one. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember the name. They had like. I can't remember. It's actually included on the the Scream Factory one. Yeah, but on the second disc, but Yeah, but just... the transfer from the Blu-ray. Yeah. Let me just see here. Is it says... is it It doesn't say I I, rem- I remember the one uh the thing thanks not Thanksgiving. The Thanks, uh, thanks, not thanks, killing. I, I, I don't know. It was, it was something, some name like, uh, you know, holiday related type name. Do I, like, Damn it, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to find out. Breathing or something like that? So, something like that. I'm, I'm going to check right now, actually. And, uh, uh, well, whoop. Like, what's Black. up with that edition, dude? Like, they, it came out, like, right before that Scream Factory release. Yeah, it, it came out um, just, I think, about a year or two years before the Scream Factory. And, uh... I, seasons it, Greeting, right? Seasons, yes. Seasons Grievings edition or something? Grieving? Or, seasons Grievings? Or... Yeah, something like that. Let me... Black Christmas uh, Seasons Grievings Edition, yeah. Es- essentially, yeah. Um, that that came out, and uh, you know, about like a couple of years later, I think it was yeah, a couple of years later, the the Scream Factory came out. And they did a new transfer and everything, so that's what we have. But they also included the Seasons Grievings edition as the second disc. There was more to it, though. Yeah, yeah, th- yeah. There, there was more stuff as well. But you know, you got both cut, both um, transfers and everything, so that's kind of cool. Uh, are you on, like, Blu-ray.com? Yeah. How's the transfer for, um... How's the uh, transfer, like, rated for the season's grieving? I'll take a look. Uh... Come on. Nope. Here we go. Blu-ray review. Um... Uh, video quality... Three and a half out of five. Mm. And uh, let's take a look at uh, Scream Factory's one, what that got. Scream Factory's got a uh, four and a half out of five. No, oh, all right. Yeah. You know, it, it's what it is. I mean, it's um, the Seaving, Seasons Grievings Edition had. It, it was it was it was a decent transfer. I mean, don't get me wrong. But... Yeah, and that, well, that artwork, like the, the season's grieving artwork, was so much better than that trash artwork that Scream Factory put out. Though, I actually don't mind the Scream Factory one, but it's yeah. the The other one was just classier. Yeah, dude, my my Scream Factory, like I don't got the sleeve, the yeah. slip for it. Ah, yeah. And, like, since I got no slip for it, like, it's, like, <clears throat> all the way original cover for sure, dude. Yeah. Well, I always find whatever, whenever I have, like, the slip, I always uh, use yeah, the original the cover on the inside. The, yeah, yeah, me too, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the... The Seasons Grievings edition is, it's a nice, it's a nice release, honestly. You know, 
it's uh, all ported over, so. Except for the little Room Org magazine that it came with it. Room Org magazine? It came with, like, a little, like, um... How can I... It, it's like a little, um... Like, mini magazine insert type thing. That mm. was, I guess, just for the the season's grievings edition or whatever. Yeah. Enclosed booklet, uh, an essay by the editor of room org interview with Bob Clark, lots of interview snippets and stuff like that. I think that was pretty much the only real, you know, like, uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Like, like real exclusive thing. And apparently there was some BD ROM content, but you know. Who cares nowadays, still? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, it's a damn fine movie. And hell, it's the birth of the slasher genre. Yeah. Yeah, it predated Halloween by two years, so. And it's motherfucking Canadian. Hell yeah. <clears throat> we make some of the best. Like we really two, do. two years before Halloween, right? Yeah. 76, right? Yeah. Well, of course, um, it's been, uh, it's been said that, uh, Bob Clark is actually the reason that Halloween got made because John Carpenter was talking to Bob Clark and he said, like, you know, have you ever thought of a sequel? And he says, well, no, but, like, what what I'd do is I'd, uh, I'd have the killer come back, and it would be in the fall, and the movie would be called Halloween. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, John Carpenter ran with it, and he, he did his own thing, and that's become a classic. I, 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 it always kind of annoys me how long it's taken for Black Christmas to get the love it deserves. Now, I, I will say, Elvis loved Black Christmas. Yeah. He used to watch it every year. So, you know, there you go. If you're a fan of the king, <laughs> he was a fan, a fan of Black of Christmas. King. If you're a racist, because <laughs> you know Elvis was a pure fucking racist, so... Okay, news to me, but I don't know. <laughs> Oh yeah, dude. Dude, Elvis was the biggest fucking racist ever. <laughs> like, no shit, dude. I'm not even kidding. I'll I'll take your word for it. You know, I'm not I'm not the hugest Elvis fan. I don't know all of his stuff, uh, so. Yeah, I'm not too, dude. But he was pretty fucking racist. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Then again, is it really a surprise? Uh, pretty much really. everyone in the 50s and 60s was racist, so. Yeah, pretty much every everyone's racist. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> look at us. Yeah, well, if you listen to the SJWs, everyone's either racist or sexist or yeah, fucking disabledist or whatever. I don't care. Yeah. Here's what here. This is my thought on that. It's always been the same. I don't care if you're black, you're white, if you're, you know, Asian, if you're Puerto Rican, whatever. If you're an asshole, I will hate you. What if you're Baby Yoda, though? Baby Yoda gets a pass. For pretty much everything, he gets exactly. a pass. Baby Yoda could have wiped Baby out you, the run. Baby Yoda could, could look me right in the eye and say, fuck you. Yeah, and he'd be like, aww. And no, dude, I, I literally like just, especially now since we know he can like force choke. I Hell yeah! Right. No problem, dude. No problem, dude. Yep. No. Yep. Sorry. Sorry. Man, I, I, I just, I love that scene. You know, he's like, she's messing with my Mandalorian. Sure. <laughs> <coughs> He's like, no, 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 no. Yeah. Bro, yeah. 
I seen two, and he's like, and they're all talking and shit, like in the, um, like downstairs in the uh, the spaceship and shit, and the spaceship like starts to move like crazy, and like yeah, he's just up, like, just up there screwing around with the controls. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, <clears throat> seriously, you can put Baby Yoda in anything, and it makes it better. Oh, yeah, Black dude. Black Christmas. Could you imagine if when you see that eye looking through the through the door slot, had it been Baby Yoda instead? <clears throat> Completely different movie. Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> Maybe Baby Yoda was Billy all all along. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but Baby Yoda, dude. What a character, dude. Baby. Hell Bob- yeah. I mean, how many characters do you know have have healed an entire fan base? I can't think of any others. And the blink of an eye. Yeah. <laughs> I, man, I, I just, I, just, Baby Yoda's awesome. Don't you want one? Gotta buy them. Oh, yeah, dude! Everybody. Well, baby Yoda. And uh, now he's in danger. Yeah. And we have to wait for another week until it comes out again so we can see what happens. Uh, and what about that I have spoken quill, dude? I think he's I think he's alive. I think the that robot's gonna save him. At least I certainly hope so, because I love I love I have spoken. I pretty much love awesome. every fucking character of that show, dude, to be honest. Oh, yeah. And here we go f- for all them SJWs. Um, the, the the chick. I can't remember her name. Cara, Cara Dune or whatever. Yeah. That, that is how you make a strong female character. You know? Yeah. She's not overpowered, but she's... Badass. She's yeah. just a badass. That's that's all you need, you know. You don't need to make them, you know, freaking, you know. Like she was even with the Mando, so I mean, you don't yeah. need much to like just. Yeah, that that's enough, you know. Just show that. It's it's but, the way, you know. This is the way. Yeah, but since Baby Yoda is a male, and we know that for sure, since Episode Four. Yeah. That little green male force choked a female, though. Meh, well, you're messing with his Mando. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, do, I just love the fact, you know, that a baby force choked someone with the same level of choking that Darth Vader does. Oh, yeah, I, mean, dude. I mean, her reaction is pretty much the same as that duty force choked but in the office. God with... damn, people are dumb. Like, yeah. you look up, but like, on the under- internet, like, people like, are like, oh, Baby Yoda might be evil. Baby Yoda's evil. Baby Yoda's the next set. Like, force choke, force choke, force choke. <laughs> Shut up. Fuck out of here. Like, like, yeah. from the get go, like, Return of the Jedi, like, maybe like six minutes in when um, Luke enters, like, Jabba's pals, like, he literally, like, forced choked two Gamorrean guards, like, right away. So Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. People just need to look a bit closer. I kind <clears throat> excuse me. I kind of dug what I have spoken has kind of said, that he reckons that Baby Yoda isn't a clone. I don't think he is. No, I think he's, like, a naturally born character maybe they like maybe Yoda's I don't even know what you call the species so I'm just gonna call them Yoda's maybe they reproduce like you know they a piece drops off them or something and it grows into another one yeah yeah <clears throat> But yeah, so uh, <laughs> we've got a bit off topic of uh, 
Christmas horror movies, but uh, you can never go wrong with Baby Yoda. Can never go wrong. Can never go wrong with the Lord and Savior. Yep, Baby Yoda. <laughs> Man. So that was episode five? Five, yeah. Yeah. Oh, we still haven't done part two of the Alien franchise, right? No, but then again, you know, it is Christmas, right? You got to get out the Christmas special at Christmas or it's a bit. Yeah, or you're like me and you're working like thir- 13 hours like straight. and Yeah. You don't uh, even get like the time to send a okay on messenger so yeah <laughs> yeah man well it's 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 that time of year isn't it things get crazy around now yeah pretty much <laughs> yeah so yeah we'll be getting uh the rest of the alien franchise done in like the next few by the end of uh 2020 you should have it yeah there we go <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so, that was motherfucking little dead meat, aka yeah. motherfucking lunatic butcher. You know who it is. <laughs> and BDG reviews. Yeah. Sign out. Yep. Peace out. <laughs>